Hello, fifth grade friends, it's Mr. Cardis, and I hope you're all doing well. I'm making some YouTube videos to introduce new concepts and lessons. Today's video is about tied notes and slurred notes. I'm going to start with tied notes. A tie is when you have two notes of the same pitch, the same letter name, connected by a curvy line. You play tied notes for the combination of beats that are on the page. So in this example, I have two half notes tied together. Each half note is two beats. So two plus two equals four beats. This is how I would play this example. So I played one note for four beats. Even though I have two notes written on the page, because they are tied together, they're going to sound like one note. Now you might be wondering, why didn't I just have a whole note written on my music staff? I mean, a whole note is four beats. Well, in this case, if you notice, my time signature says two, four. The numerator, the number two, tells me I'm only allowed to have a maximum of two beats in each measure. So I'm not allowed to have a note that's worth more than that in each measure. So I would have to tie two half notes together in order to get the sound of four beats um, in my example. This is another example of a tie. In this case, I have a dotted half note, which is worth three beats, tied to a quarter note, which is worth one beat. So three plus one is four. Again, if you look at the time signature, it says three, four. I'm only allowed at a maximum in this example to have three beats in each measure, so I can't use a whole note. So in order to get to four, I have to tie a dotted half note to a quarter note. Another thing you'll, you'll notice in this example is I can mix rhythmic values. So I can mix a, a dotted half note with a quarter note, as long as they're the same letter name. So you can have a whole note tied to a half note as long as both notes are an F sharp or a D or an A. So it's just the letter name that has to be the same, not the rhythm note value. So this example would sound like this. So slurred notes are when you have two or more different notes, notes of different pitches connected by a curvy line. So in this example, I'm going to use viola notes. I have a D slurred to an E. In string playing, you play slurred notes in the same bow stroke. So I would play these two notes in one bow. So here's what that would look like. A few things to help you when you're trying out slurred notes for the first time. You want to make sure you know the note names of the notes that are slurred very well. As the bow is moving in one direction, you don't have a lot of time to figure out, well, how many fingers is this note or what string is it on? So you really want to know all of that before you try to slur the notes. Another really um, important thing to note is that if I have two notes that are slurred, I want to divide my bow in half. I want to use the first half of the bow for the first note, the second half of the bow for the second note. That's going to give you a very even sound. So if you use too much bow on one of the notes and not enough bow on the other note, you'll get an uneven sound. So it'll sound like this. So you hear a big swell on the note that has a lot of bow and you almost hear nothing on the bow that has very little bow. Or if you did it the other way around, 
So in order to avoid that, you want to use equal amounts of bow on each note. If I had three notes slurred, you would divide the bow in thirds. So the first third of the bow would be for the first note, the second third of the bow would be for the second note, and the last third of the bow would be for the third note. So you want to uh, plan your bow amount um, in advance. And the last thing that's very helpful, particularly when you're slurring notes on the same string, the bow really doesn't help with the rhythm. It's really just going in one direction, whether it's down bow or up bow. What's actually dictating the rhythm is your left hand placement. So in this case, I have D to E. I want to make sure when I put the first finger down on my instrument, I do it at the right time. So since these are both quarter notes, they get one beat, I want to time my left hand with my tap. So it's D, E, D, E. That's actually going to help me play the notes uh, more evenly. So you might wanna practice those two things, the, the bow division and just practicing the left hand with the tap, and then you might want to put it together. That'll make it a little bit more easy the first time you're trying it. You want to be patient when you're trying this. It takes some time. Remember, up until this point, we've been doing separate bows. So when you're first learning how to play notes slurred, it might take a few tries and that's okay. You'll get the hang of it eventually, but be patient. So in your book on page 29, example 109 starts off like this. You have, uh, again, I'm using viola notes, D, E, rest, rest, E, D rest, rest. And those are the two notes you have in the entire song. So the first set of slurred notes are on a down bow. The second set are on an up bow. So that would sound like this. So I'll do that again. Rest, 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 and so on and so forth. Please let me know if you have any questions. Your parents can send me an email. And until next time, happy practicing.